Now, let's go over it all again, Mr. Filonis. You got up and went to the window. That's right. I couldn't sleep. I had a big night. A wild night? Oh, no, nothing like that. I was cold sober. I just want to get the facts straight. Oh, I understand, Lieutenant. You said you're a Greek citizen, hmm? That's right. I flew in yesterday from Saudi Arabia. I'm a construction engineer. I'm employed by an American company there. You see, I always wanted to come to this country. People are wonderful. This city is so exciting and women are beautiful. So I just look at the sights. Including one sight you never expected to see. Yes. Now, let's go back again, Mr. Filonis. You said you were at the window when you heard the shots. And you looked out, and you saw clearly the two men who drove by. Yes. As I said, I saw the car coming. And then I saw it catching up with the man. And, and then I saw the shooting. I just want to get the details straight. May I have some sugar, please? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Now you described the car. You said it was a DeSoto. Light blue sedan, 1959, New York license, number 5C3289. That's right. And you're quite sure you can identify the man who did the shooting? Well, if I ever see him again, I'm sure. You see, I have an eye for detail. It's part of my training. You may get that chance, Mr. Flores. The dead man was an important underworld figure. Oh, I didn't know that. Who was he? Does the name Frankie Russo mean anything to you? Russo? Italian, huh? No, I'm afraid it doesn't. No, I guess not. You're being out of the country. Tell me something, Lieutenant Carnivan. Does this thing happen often in this country? Uh, too often. I don't like that. Nobody does. Believe me, Mr. Filonis. Well, we got a job to do. I want you to look at these pictures. This is what we call the mug book. And see if you can recognize the killers of Frankie Russo. Well, I'd say we're pretty lucky getting a break like this and this fast. Sometimes we play in luck. Yep, sometimes we do. You sure he doesn't know anybody? Nope, not a soul. He just got in this country yesterday. He's Greek. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to find somebody to put him up and keep him out of sight until we need him. Sure, Captain. Put him up in a hotel, huh? Put a couple of men on him. We did that once before, didn't we, Captain? Nobody's blaming you for what happened that time. You couldn't have done any more than you did, getting yourself all shot up. That's right, Captain. I couldn't have done any more than I did, except maybe keep Pete Morris alive. Oh, come out of it, Jim. That's all behind us. All right. OK. Well, what do you suggest? Lock him up? That's pretty rough on a guy who's only trying to be helpful, but at least he'll be safe. No, you don't mean that. I'm only trying to save him from what happened to Pete Morris. But we won't let it happen. That's right, we won't. He's in my office now, looking through a mug book. You think he'll spot a face? No, he says he can identify the men. He says he got a clear look at the both of them. What he doesn't know is that that look might cost him his life. If the news got out, he saw them, you mean? Oh, it'll get out all right. It always does. <laughs> that poor guy. He doesn't even know who Frankie Russo was. He really stepped into something. Everybody knew that Frankie Russo was going to get it next. Now it looks like Polonis has signed his own death warrant. Not if we take care of him. But if you're going to handle it, you better make sure he's on the level. Captain, that's one thing I'm really sure of. All right, then. What we need right now is a plan. What kind of a plan? Well, I've been thinking. There's a better way of protecting a witness. Let him drop out of sight. You mean let him go out there where a couple of killers are waiting? Now, just stop a minute and examine it, Jim. Whoever made the hit on Russo would gun this creek down to nothing flat. Not if we handle it right. Letting him go would be the last thing anybody in the world would expect us to do, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Look, we'll be giving him a break, and he deserves it. 
And this time we'll make sure there isn't any leak or any chance of anybody stumbling over him. He'll just disappear. There's a little town up the river, Denton. The local police will cooperate. I'll call him myself. You mean you want Falonis to go up there on his own? Sure, he'll make like a commuter. He'll get lost in the crowds here until train time. When he gets up there, police will pick him up, take him to a hotel. The inn, it's called. The police will give him protection. They'll know what to do. Well, at least it'll get him away from here. It'll work, too. All right, Captain, I'll tell him. Oh. Their picture is not in this book. Well, I didn't think they would be, but we had to try. Maybe this will help. Hmm. I do a lot of drawing in my work. Is it of any value? Well, maybe so. At least it'll give us some idea who we're looking for. We decided to keep you out of town until we located the killers. How long will that take? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Polonis. If this sketch is any good, it might not take long at all. I'll put it on wire right away. Lieutenant, wait a minute. I think I would rather continue my travels in this country. I like it so much. I'm afraid we can't let you do that. Well, why not? Oh, I can write to you and tell you where I am, and after you arrest them, you can send for me and I'll come right back and identify them. Oh, I, I promise you that, really. You don't realize what kind of a spot you're in. We don't even want you to go back to your hotel. But I've got to. I've got my things there. I oh, will take care of them. Now, you listen to me. There are two things that you've got to think about. One, you're the only man in the world who saw those men kill Frank Russo. Two, they're sure to find out who tipped us off. You mean this man may, may come after me to, to kill me? That's exactly what I mean. I never should have looked out of the window. But you did. And you did the right thing by coming in. Now it's up to us, including what happens to you. All right, Lieutenant. What do you want me to do? Now, we don't want anybody seeing you or remembering you. Now, the safe place to be is in a crowd. Well, like walking along the street where there's a lot of people or going to a ball game or anything like that. Do you understand? Oh, you mean I can just walk out of here? Well, there's more to it than that. And by the time this sketch gets circulated around, I want you miles from here. And don't get any fancy ideas. Remember, I told you, those men are professional killers. Well, where do you want me to go? Now, this afternoon, I want you to take a train, just like any regular commuter, up the river to a little town by the name of Denton. You got that? Denton. Yeah. We'll alert the local police up there, and they'll pick you up at the station when you arrive. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, they'll take you to a hotel called the Inn. And you'll stay there until we contact you. I'll just stay at the Inn, is that it? That's right. And the only two people who know you're there are myself and Captain Long. All right, Lieutenant. I, I guess you know your business. I hope you do. Is he going along? He's not only going along, he's gone. Good. He give you any identification? Nothing in the mug book. It's like we said, outside guns. But he did do this. Pretty good drawing. Maybe we're still in luck. Well, if the guy really looks like that, I'd say yes. But I'm not sure. Look like anybody you've ever seen? Nope. Sit down a minute, will you, Jim? I want to talk to him. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. You know, it's been two weeks since you got out of the hospital. I'm not so sure you're ready for anything strenuous. Now, you were injured on duty, and as an IOD, you have every right to a desk job for a while. How about it? No, thanks, Captain. I'd like to continue with this. Well, at least knock off for the rest of the day. Go on home and get some sleep. Captain, I got a lot of work to do. Now, look, I want my men in top shape when I need them. 
Now go on home. Get some rest. Well, I gotta put this sketch on the That's line. routine. I'll take care of that. And I'll take care of the newspaper men, too. They're kicking up a fuss about this. Now go on, beat it. All right, Captain. You don't take too fast to strangers. Wait till he gets to know you. He can be vicious. We call him Dracula. Oh, come on. He seems like a pleasant fellow. Ah. What do you know, George? Drax taken up with a stranger. Listen, Seth, we need a force. Please join us. George is trying to make him a watchdog. He don't like him to be friendly to strangers. Seth? I'm coming. You take care of Mommy's people. I'll be back soon. Now we'll have more money in the pot, so we'll be Okay. I shouldn't play without Drac in my lap. Dracula's my good luck piece. Give me good luck. Well, you can give me a few. Is this he taken? It is and it isn't. It belongs to Dracula. Uh, I see. Oh, excuse me. Please sit down. Well, thank you. This doesn't happen often. I don't understand what you mean. A gentleman giving up his seat. Well, where I come from, that's the proper thing to do. object to your sitting in the seat until she returns? I don't think so.
That's Dracula. Vicious. He is? <laughs> oh, he's precious. How old is he? I really don't know. He belongs to that lady over there playing cards. He was supposed to watch the seat for her. Well, she was happy where she is. Can I have it? Oh, no. He's not supposed to like strangers. <laughs> Which one do you want? Hmm? Which stop do you want? Denton. Oh, that's my stop. You can relax. I could get off in my sleep. Oh, thank you. That will help. I've never been on that land before. Well, I wouldn't recommend it as a daily diet. We're on time tonight. That's really something. Obviously, you've been a commuter for some time. Longer than I care to remember. It used to get me the same old rat race night after night, but I guess I'm numb to it now. Is this Denton a big town? No, not very big. But it has a mayor and a chief of police and a city council. I can see you like Denton. Yes, I like it. I happen to like small towns as opposed to cities. I'm with you then. Hmm. Another 30 minutes. Oh, yes, we have three aces. No. No wonder I'm losing. Dracula, come here. <laughs> I'm going to get me a pooch like him one of these days. It must be difficult to raise a dog in the city. Oh, well, in Denton, that would be no problem, but there's no one home all day to take care of him. Uh, do you want to read the paper? No, thank you. I've been keeping up with the news lately. Got out of the habit. I buy it mostly for the crossword puzzle, but I didn't feel in the mood tonight. Well, why? There's still time, isn't it? <laughs> How much this time? Uh, uh, make, it a, make it a bigger part there, because yeah, we get okay. to the station. So so Two thirty-eight down. Uh huh. Uh, three letters. Let's see, a, a cave, a depression in the earth. Oh, oh, what could that be? Uh, it starts with a V. The word is Vug, V U G. <laughs> Wherever did you pick up a word like that? In Greece, from a friend of mine, a geologist. You're Greek? Yes. I just came in the country yesterday. I like it here very much. Oh, I'm afraid this is us. We won't be able to finish the puzzle. Too bad. We had it almost finished. <laughs>
sorry. My people aren't here. Would you please give me a ride to the inn? Well, sure. Hop in. of town. My house is up that way, way up there on Poplar Street. I want you to know I appreciate this. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not out of my way. His name is Martin Polonis, a Greek national, six feet tall and weighs 180 pounds. Dark hair, brown eyes, and wearing a gray suit. According to a police report, he may have met with foul play. Polonis left police headquarters early this afternoon, ostensibly to return to his hotel, but has so far failed to arrive. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. You're in trouble? Yeah. I'm afraid I am. Oh, but I haven't done anything, if that's what you're thinking. The, the terrible part is I haven't done a thing. Look, I've changed my mind. Please just drop me off any place. But why? The inn's the only hotel in town. Well, I can't go there now. I've got to think things over. This place is as good as any. Please let me off. No, you're a stranger in town. I'm not going to let you out. Looks like you've got some thinking to do. And I've got the perfect place for it. My house. It's a very nice place, and you can do all the thinking you want there. What'd he say? He said he's gonna get in touch with the cop. Rudy must have said more than that. Well, you were in there long enough. He doesn't know why the guy didn't show. He's gonna have the cop come on up here, all right? Well, what good's that gonna do? Keep the local cops out of our hair, maybe. We could use some help. Yeah, but not cop help. You know, just like the fuzz, they get everything balled up. Hey, I got an idea. You know, maybe this character came in here by car or bus or something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. I think we better have a look at that end. Yeah. He might have gone right there, huh? Yeah. I'm in favor of that. I don't understand it around for me. I had enough without you stir. different than a big city. Mm, I like it. It's a little out of the way, but it's home. You've been very kind. Sometime I'm gonna cut the loan for you. Oh, man around this house would be very nice. Well, this is your uh, thinking room. Like it? Yes, very much. <laughs> oh, if a drink would help. No, no, thank you. Oh. A sandwich, then. No, really, I meant it when I said I wanted to thank. Oh, I'll leave you alone, then. I'll be in the kitchen. you were going to think. I don't seem to find a place where to begin. 
Why don't you tell me about it? I don't know. Do you really want to hear? Very much. It's all so mixed up. Maybe it would help if I talk to you. Hmm? Well, I'm listening. Well, I arrived in New York in the afternoon. Uh. I'm sorry. I woke you up, didn't I? I thought it was a siren. I was going to wake you anyway. There was a news broadcast on TV while you were asleep about the eyewitness. What about him? You mean you really don't know? What are you talking about? Well, he's gone. And they think... Paloma's that... gone? Gone where? What else did they say? Well, they said he never got back to the hotel. They think that he... Well, they think that he might have been killed. Killed? They brought up the other time, Jim. That time with Pete Morris. They won't be able to blame this on you. Will they? You were here asleep. Willie sent you home. Jim? Jim. This came for you. Were you expecting it? What is it? You better get out of here. Why? Will you go into the other room? Go into the other room. What is it, a bomb? I don't know. Will you please leave me with it? No. Open it. going to do? Jim, where are you going? I see it all now. But you're not well. Are you sure you can handle this? That's what I got to find out. Stay here in the car. I'll see if he checked in. Uh, you got a guy named Polonus registered here. Polonus? Yeah. Hmm. I don't think so. Here, let me see. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Nobody by that name. Well, did anybody check in this afternoon at all? 
Well, as a matter of fact, it's been pretty quiet today. There hasn't been anybody in. You're the first. Uh, do you want a room? I can make you a good rate. No, no, no. Thanks anyway, Pop. What'll it be? How far is Denton? Oh, about 10 miles. Thanks. Fill it up, will you please? Okay. Clara, what brings you down to headquarters at this hour? Well, it's, it's about Jim, Captain. Jim? Is there something wrong? I don't know. Captain Long, he left the house about an hour ago. It was right after the news broadcast about the missing witness. I thought he might have come down here. Well, no, he hasn't been here. Are you sure he didn't give you some hint as to where he might be headed? Well, before his nap, he said he might be going to Denton in a few days. Did anything happen to make him act like this? No. Well, I'll put out a call and get him home to you. I'm terribly worried about him. Of course you are, but I'm sure he's all right. Thank you, Captain. You think nothing of it. We all know what Jim's been through, and we're all rooting for him. Good night. You play very well. Thank you, sir. In fact, you seem to do everything very well. My, it's nice to be appreciated. There. It's not a Picasso, but... He looks dangerous. He is. So is his pal. Before you drew this face, you said something about a policeman. Well, Lieutenant Carnivan? You think he's tied up with these two hoodlums? Well, what else can I think? He seemed like a nice person. Only underneath, he seemed bothered with something. He acted kind of intense, I guess you'd say. I wouldn't jump to conclusions so fast. Well, why? Look, he even wrote out the schedule for me in his own handwriting. Here, the train, the time, the place I'll be staying, everything. Have you thought about calling the police here and telling them about it? Right now, I wouldn't even trust the Greek consulate. The lieutenant was supposed to alert the police here. Maybe to tell them to stay out of the way and until I was. But if you're not going to call the police, what are you going to do? I don't know. But I can't stay here and involve you. I guess I'll go to the end. Oh, but you can't go there. You know what? Maybe I misjudged the police and they're waiting for me at the end. Maybe I was all wrong about Lieutenant Carnivan. Who knows? It's possible that they miss me at the station. I don't know. I, I don't understand yet your ways in this country. But I think I will go to the inn and find out. Don't you think so? But these two men, if they knew you were going to be coming in on that train, they'll surely know about the inn. Well, I know, but I can't find out anything by staying here. But you just can't walk in there. I'm not going to just walk in there. I'll, how do you call it? I'll case the joint. Well, you're not going alone. I'm going with you. Oh, no, you can't do that. I can't let you. This character is dangerous. <laughs> Look, you might want to come back here. I think I have a stake in this now. And I'm going to drive you to the inn. Come on. Oh. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> American women drive like demons. <laughs> I know these streets have been over them often enough. Well, it's not just that. It's a, I've never met anybody like you. Women in the old country... American women are different. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I mean, in the city? Oh, I'm a dress designer for a clothing firm. Nothing very exciting. How about you? I'm an engineer. Been in Saudi Arabia for the last four years. Before that, I was away for three. I don't know anybody anymore at home, except my folks. My parents live in Connecticut. 
Maybe when this is all over. I mean, I, I know where you live now. <laughs> and you know which train I take. If you want to find me, you can. I will. Believe me, I will. I don't think he's going to show, John. Well, we'll see. It's early yet. Yeah, but you should have been here by now. Come on, relax. The police station's up ahead. I'll go there if I have to. We're approaching the end now. Well, let me off before you drive up. I'd rather not get you too close to the place. I want to thank you very much. Good luck. It's a car. Not many cars like that. He's coming back again. And that's the broad, the same one. Yeah, but where's the guy? Sure is. Maybe we'll find out why pretty soon. Driving up and back. She's looking for somebody. Us. She found us. Now she takes off. You think so? Yeah. And a guy she was with, I bet he's the one we want. Oh, well, where's he at now? I don't know. But I think we better find that girl. We know the car. Once we find that, we'll get to Polonis. I don't like this, Johnny. Yeah, neither do I. I think we better call Rudy again. We need that cop. Come on. change, I'd like to use your phone. Sure. Help yourself. Thank you. Operator, get me the police. Talk to the cop. He should be here now. Right now, we better start looking for that car. That's where Polonis is. Hey, she fingered it. Yeah. Okay, keep your eyes open. Look out for a car like that, Baines. It might be in the driveway or the front of the house. You got that? Oh, I got it. All right, right, let's go. This is Bert, Andy. We just got a call. There were two killers here. You seen anybody, Selby? Killers? Somebody playing jokes, Bert? This is on the level, Selby. Woman called just now. I haven't seen any killers. There were two men here. One of them just came in and used the phone. You sure they're not outside? Well, 
They were standing out here for a long time. One of them said he was looking for a fellow named Polonus or something like that. I thought they were just waiting for him. No, they went. I can't help you there. I thought they were still out here. Probably just a false alarm. Some woman got hysterical. We get our share. Sorry. We'll be on our way. In case they come back, give us a call. Sure thing, Bert. Come on, Andy. Something for you? I'm with the New York police. I'm looking for a man six feet tall, 180 pounds. He's wearing a... I haven't seen him. How do you know? I haven't finished describing him yet. Well, the only guys I've seen are the two men the police are supposed to be looking for. Two men? The police? Yes, some woman reported they were killers, but they didn't look like it to me. But where are these two men now? Oh, they left before Andy and Bert got here. Who are Andy and Bert? They're on the force here. They were here just uh, a These two men, did they leave alone? I guess so. I didn't see anybody go with them. Say, what's going on anyway? I'll let you know. doing this right. Why? We should go to the center of town and start making circles. Bigger circles all the time. That way we can be sure we won't miss that car. Yeah, it's a good idea, Johnny. Name's Carnival, Detective Lieutenant, New York City Police. I'd like to talk to your chief, please. That's Captain Johns. He's in his office back there. Well, thank you. I just came from the inn. I was told that you sent a couple of your men over there a little while ago. Yeah. Got that call about 9.05. And it was a woman who made that call, is that right? Yeah. Some woman got all excited. <laughs> Thought there were a couple of killers up there. Two guys had been there, but we don't know who they are. Selby Gardner, he's the owner. He'll call back when they get back. Mm -hmm. We'll check it out then. I see. This woman who made the call, did she say where she was calling from? She didn't want to say. <laughs> but I asked her. She said it was uh, Herb's Drugstore. Herb's Drugstore. Thank you, sir. There's Captain Johns now. Captain Johns? Yes. Jim Conovan, Detective Lieutenant, New York City Police. Yes, what can I do for you, Lieutenant? You can help me prevent a man, an innocent man, from getting killed in your town. Hmm. Must have to do my excitement here with the killers. Better come inside. You're stopping for Johnny. I, I just thought of something. <sighs> yeah, what? Suppose she keeps her car in the garage. No, no, not if she lets it sit down by the station all day. Well, maybe she does. Well, then, so then she does. Well, what do we do then? We'll just take our chances. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. Excuse me, how do I call New York City on the phone? Dial O, get the operator. She'll Thanks. get you long distance. Takes a little time. Be patient, you'll get through. Oh, hello, I would like to place a phone call to a New York newspaper. Oh, I don't care, anyone will do. That will be fine. But please hurry. This is an emergency. I'll wait. Okay. City desk? Oh, no, not another one. This is my unlucky day. Well, sure. Of course put them on. Who knows? Hello. This is city desk. Oh, hello. This is Martin Felonis, and I need your help. I heard radio reports that say that I, I ran away or that something happened to me. Before you go any further, you might like to know that you're the fifth person in three hours who's called claiming to be Martin Felonis. And they all want to know if we won't please come out and take some pictures and write a life story. No, no, this is Martin Felonis. And I'm, I'm in a little town up the river called Denton. Well, I've got to hand it to you. You're the first person who's dreamed up an out-of-town location. But the police has sent me here. And, and I met this girl. What? No, I don't know her name. Now, look, you just sober up, and when you do, you come in here and tell us all about it, and we'll see what we can do about it. No, I haven't had anything to drink. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are these two men, and they're the killers, and they're after her and myself. And the police being in on it, I thought that... Yes, every cop in town is looking for you. But of course they are, but not for the reason you think. Oh, brother, you've got it bad, and I've had it. Bye. Could you please tell me where I can get a taxi? Sure, the taxi stands down the street and around the corner. Thank you. I tell you, Captain, they're here, someplace in town. I talked to the clerk at the inn and he said that they were there and left. We talked to this uh, Mr. Gardner, too. Yes, yes, he said that there were a couple of policemen there. And the uh, two men had just left. So? So what, Lieutenant? Well, aren't your men out looking for them? Not at the moment, uh, no. Well, what are you waiting for? Those men are dangerous, Captain. Don't you know what they've done? Hold it, hold it. Easy does it, son. You better sit down. You see, Lieutenant, uh, you must remember, you haven't said what two big city hoods would be doing up here. Look, I told you. Or uh, why would a lady call up and say they were at the inn and then hang up? And then you turn up, hmm, and it causes a man to ponder. Those men killed a man in the city, Captain. They're up here because they're after the only man who saw them do it. That man is here in Denton, and I've got to find him. No names yet, hmm? Well, if you want names, we've got names. Oh, uh, we have radios up here, son. We even have TV here. When an alarm gets sent out, we usually get told about it. Let's see, uh, you're talking about the Frankie Russo killing. Man named Martin Felonis. He's a Greek national, and uh, he made the mistake of seeing him. That's right. You know, son, uh, offhand, I'd say that you're pushing yourself pretty hard. Well, I... Is there anything you haven't told me I'd like to know? Like what? Well, like for Lonus, why would he be up here, for example? He's here because I, I sent him up here, Captain. I set him up like a duck in a shooting gallery. And uh, now I'm just trying to get him off the hook. So you even admit it, Jim. You try to make a monkey out of everybody. Me, the whole department. All right, let's have it. How much do they pay you to pull the switch? Send for Lonus up here, set him up to get rubbed out. Wait a minute. Gentlemen, we should talk this over in private. Please, I want a taxi quickly. Where are you going? 
Uh, I, I don't know exactly. Well, how can I? Oh, I'm looking for a house, and I've got to locate it right away. I've got an idea where it is, but, I, but I'm not exactly sure. Well, uh, whose house is it? Oh, I don't know her name. Her? Oh, please, I would appreciate it if you can help me. Now, listen, mister, we only have two cabs at night, and both are out on long runs right now. One is over to Webster City, which is about 15 minutes away, and the other oh, one never is down mind, to never Joe's mind. place. Police department. This is the person who called about the two men. Did you capture them? No, lady, we didn't. They weren't there when the police got there. But they're dangerous men. We'll take care of it. Don't you worry about it. Thank you. I'm willing to make some allowances, Jim, but not many. Allowances? Who cares about allowances? You make me sick, Willie. You got yourself shot up, and that takes something out of a man. Look, we should be out there trying to help an innocent man from being killed. And we sit in here and we talk about allowances. Simmer down, son. Why? You know, Willie, once I thought you were a good cop, one of the best. I was proud to work with you, for you. I'll say it again, Jim. I'm willing to make some allowances. Will you shut up about allowances? Well, I suppose, in a way, it's my fault in giving you the case, knowing that you lost something in the hospital. But tell me, Captain Long, were you disappointed when I pulled through, were you? How did you feel when you learned that I didn't go down the drain with Pete Morris? How long has the rot been going on, Willie? How much of you has it eaten away? When did it start, Willie? And why did it start? Tell me, was it women, liquor, gambling debts? What was it, Willie? I'm sorry about this, Captain, but I rather expected it. Why don't you tell me, Willie? Why don't you tell me? Lieutenant, that's enough from you. You've said enough. You see, uh, Lieutenant Carnivan knew that Thelonis was here because he sent him. Now, uh, would you mind telling me... How I knew? Not at all, Captain. And I don't blame you for asking. We got a tip that a package was delivered to Jim's house. And what was in the package? It happened to be $10,000 in 10s, 20s, and 50s. Wife has the money now. And hysterics. We know because we were there. Will he, I... All right. You can believe what you want, Captain. I can't match words with him, so I won't try. I'm just a cop, maybe a dumb cop, I don't know. But I do know there's an innocent man out there who might get killed. And I'm going to find him. Look, Jim. Nobody's blaming you. You've just lost your head. I'm leaving. Not a very large village, son. Not many places to hide. If you want to hide, suit yourself. You'll pick him up, of course. Mm, no rush. But if he finds Falonis? He has no better starting place than we have. He's a good cop, even a smart cop. I wouldn't underrate Jim Carnivan. I'd uh, feel a lot happier if you'd pick him up. Would you? But you're a little out of your territory, aren't you, Captain? Up here, I'm kind of used to making the decisions. Okay, that's it, isn't it? Sure looks like it.
Yeah. Nothing there, Johnny. All right, check the bedroom upstairs. And don't forget the bathroom and the shower. What do you want? I told you to sit down. No guy. Well, uh, what are you looking for? I, I, I don't know anything. Now, look. You know who we want. You were pretty busy today, you and your friend. You were on the train with him. You got off with him. After that, you drove past the inn twice. Then two cops come driving up like Boy Scouts. <laughs> now, we know he told you all about her. Please. I said I don't know anything. It's the truth. You know where he is, all right. So why don't you tell us, right from the start? Hmm? here a little while ago to use the phone. A woman? Now, if anybody came in here, they'd have to step on that doormat, right? Yes, that's right. But... Then you'd pop out to see who it is. If a woman came in here, you'd see her. Well, there were a couple of women and a man tonight. This was a few minutes after 9, 9.05. A little after 9. Let me see. Yes, I remember. There was a woman came in here about that time. Good, good. What was her name? Now, look. <laughs> I don't keep track of every woman who comes in here to use the phone. Well, do you know her? No, I don't. Did you ever see her before? Sure. But I don't know who she is. Then if you saw her before, she'd be a local woman, right? Well, yes. But a name. <laughs> I don't know everybody's name who lives in town. Well, you fill prescriptions. You keep names and records. Did you ever fill a prescription for this woman before? I don't know. Now, think, man. This is important. Well, I may have. I... Yes. As a matter of fact, I know I did. When? Not too long ago. The ragweed's been playing hob with lots of folks around here, and she had a prescription for one of the antihistamines, I think. Oh, find it, would you please? Uh, I'll be using the phone while you look for it. Operator, I'm calling long distance. New York City, Gramercy 7, 4296. Hello? Maybe this is Jim. Jim, where are you? I'm in Denton. Uh, Clara, I haven't got much time. Something is wrong? Did anyone from the department come to the house? No. Nobody's been here. Not a soul. I see. When are you coming home? Not until I find my witness. I've got to get to him before somebody else does. Let somebody else do it this time, Jim, not you. There isn't anybody else. Not the way Willie set up the frame. You mean Captain Long? I haven't got time to tell you about it now. I've got to go. Goodbye. I found it. It's just like I remembered it. Lord Trimaton. Never mind that. Let me have it. I can't let this leave the store. The name then, ma'am. What was the name? Uh, Hall. Lucy Hall. And the address? 229 Poplar Street. Uh, where's Poplar Street? On the north side of town, I, I've got a map over here on the counter. I... She done something? Uh, look, just let me have the map. Thanks. Yeah, picture. 
picture of me. Let's see. But you said you didn't know anything about us, baby. Okay. Let's have it. Talk. I said talk! <laughs> you know where he is. I don't know anything. I swear I don't. If you don't start talking, I'm going to kill you. Well, you're mighty persistent, Captain. I'll give you credit for that. As a matter of fact, you tend to wear a man down. Then why don't you do something? You know, I never like to kind of dash headlong into something. I learned that years ago. Well, you'll pick him up then? Mm-hmm. When I feel that it's time to pick him up. you all about us. Real big mouth. Even draws funny pictures for you. I still don't know where he is. You know something, Johnny? What? If it was me, I'd be coming back. I wouldn't leave something this nice very long. Nah. All right, all right, keep talking. I told you. I don't know. If you want me, come out and get me. Stop that horn. 
क्या station. Yes? I'll notify Captain John. Yes? Captain, we just got a lead on those killers. We'll get right on it. Let's go. I'll have to prefer charges against him. Carnivan. Where is he? I don't know. Where is he? Where have they taken him? He ran back behind the house toward the nursery. Trapped. You follow him. I'll go the other way and head him off.
We got your call. I saw them heading for the nursery. There's a road down the street here. I know the way. Uh, get in, please. Are you all right? I think so. Are you? Oh, thank God. Well, this has been so hectic, I don't even know your name. It's Lucy. Lucy Hall. Put the cuffs on him. You get hurt? Uh, no, no, it's just my back, Captain. That's all. Be all right. Well, Willie, you're in trouble now, aren't you? Real trouble. You lock Carnivan up, Captain, and hold him for me while I make arrangements to get him back to the city. Whoever got to you, Willie, paid you, owns you. He's not going to like this very much now, is he? There'll be a departmental hearing, but there'll be a criminal trial, too, on a bribery count. There's going to be others like these, Willie. Others like these, too. And they're going to have your name on top of the list. Because they're going to think you crossed them up when they find out what happened to you. Carnivan's conduct has given the department a black eye. But I imagine we'll outlive it. You don't realize it, Willie. But you're through. Bring that man over here. Still a problem here. It's not all through. Seems there's the two of you. You and the lieutenant here. Each says the other is crooked. Each says the other set up Falonis so he could get killed. Now, one of you, that's you, Lieutenant, well, you've been kind of spraddling yourself to keep Philonis alive. And the other one, that's you, Captain, spend your time sitting and arguing with me about Carnivan. Or wasting time, Captain. I don't think so. Captain Long, you didn't give a hang about Philonis, or what might be happening to him. I gave you all the time in the world, you never gave it a thought. In a hick town like this, you're probably quite a sage, Captain. But don't try moving up into the big leagues. Not through yet, son. Our friend here rightly belongs to you people. So I guess I'll have to turn him over to you. 
Now, you don't deserve it, but uh, I'm giving you a choice. There are two of them. You ride back with one. Which one will it be? Take your time, think it over. If you ride back with one, you might not get there. Ride back with the other, I think you will. As I see it, the whole frame's kind of blown up. A man with a reputation wouldn't want some loose ends hanging around. It seems that you're a very loose end. It's always possible to shoot a man who's uh, trying to escape. Now take your pick. It's all up to you. Enough small town tricks. Take him in, Jim, and that's an order. Oh, kind of changing your tune, aren't you, Captain? Seems a minute ago you want me to lock Carnivan up. Well, I haven't heard your choice yet. Maybe it's because you don't care one way or the other. Maybe you figure you've lived long enough. Suit yourself. Smart, small-town cop arranger. That's no answer. You're a rat, Long, and they'll get you. Don't you worry about that. Your name will be at the top of the list, way up at the top. That's about all, son. We'll have that back of yours looked into. Then you can take the train back with your friend. I'll send one of our men along with you. Thanks, Captain. Well, I didn't realize what I was getting you both into. It turned out all right. I think I'm going to love this country. <laughs>